Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. This video is for entertainment purposes only. If you're someone who methodically saves your money, has a nine to five job, and likes to play things safe, this is not the video for you, right? This video is really for gamblers who want to swing for the fences. I'm going to throw out some long shot bets. You need to realize that most of the bets that I'm going to talk about in this video for fights coming up this weekend will probably lose, right? What we're hoping to do <clears throat> is to just hit on that bet that more than doubles our money, right? This way we leave the casino with a profit. I think gamblers who play it safe all the time never are able to beat the VIG, right? You need to beat the house advantage. Let's talk about actual odds and actual fights coming up this weekend. Shane Mosley versus Saul Alvarez. Now, neither guy has been knocked out in their careers. Think about that. Shane Mosley has been fighting for more than a decade. He has never been stopped, right? The books realize this, right? Skybet right now <clears throat> has the under 10 and a half rounds. In other words, the midway point of the 11th round, right? If you take the under on Skybet right now, they're giving you five to four odds. In other words, if you bet 100, you would win more than 100 in profit. Let me just say, that's an intriguing play. In fact, let's go further. Shane Mosley by knockout is 10 to 1. Right? Saul Alvarez by knockout is 6 to 4. Looking at these two guys, I don't see the fight going the distance. If you're going to give me a taste of 10 to 1, then that's a bet I have to include in my bet portfolio. Right? The way I'm thinking of playing this, quite frankly, is Shane Mosley by knockout at 10 to 1. Hedged against Saul Alvarez by knockout at 6 to 4. Because you're getting better than even money on both parts of the bet, you should be able to structure the bet so if either happens, you make a killing. Obviously, if Shane Mosley is able to win, you make the bigger killing. But if Saul Alvarez gets the KO, then you're doing fine as well. Let's talk about it. You know what they say. <clears throat> Power is the last thing to go. Think about older George Foreman. Right? The thing with old guys is that early in fights, they're still dangerous. Right? Age will rob you of stamina. As you get tired, your performance will drop off. We've seen multiple fights, right? The Floyd Mayweather fight comes to mind. The Manny Pacquiao fight comes to mind where Shane Mosley's corner in the later rounds has literally threatened him with throwing in the towel because they were so unimpressed with his performance. But understand, for the first four or five rounds of this fight, Shane Mosley is going to have a hand speed advantage and an experience advantage on 21-year-old Saul Alvarez, right? And all I can say is neither guy in this fight is defensively gifted. Saul Alvarez, who at times looks like a car crash waiting to happen, is a slow starter. He's very bad at the beginning of fights. Right? This is online. Let's be real. 
forget the media narrative. And so my point is simply this. Alvarez has been protected here. He's going to be fighting a guy who, if he's on his game, has one punch knockout power. You know what? He was able to hit Floyd Mayweather, another slow starter, early in that fight, almost stopped Floyd Mayweather, right? Shane Mosley is a very live underdog early in this fight. He certainly shouldn't be a 10 to 1 underdog. Let's flip the script for a second, right? In addition to Mosley being a live underdog, understand that Saul Alvarez has one of the biggest punches in boxing. Like Shane Mosley, Alvarez, who does have some boxing skills, is really more of a slugger than anything else. Shane Mosley hardly moves his head, right? Saul Alvarez's left hook even knocked out Carlos Baldemir. His left hook is one of the best punches in boxing, right? He combines that with a pretty devastating straight right hand. I believe this is going to be a slugfest. I believe somebody gets stopped. It could be either guy. The point is somehow the casino seems to feel that this fight is more likely to make it to the midway point of the 11th round than not. I completely disagree. I think somebody is going to get stopped in this fight, right? They're giving you a 10 to 1 taste on Shane Mosley by KO. I think you should take that as well as the 6 to 4 taste on Saul Alvarez by KO. Right? Again, these are high risk plays. Understand the risk. You lose everything if this fight goes the distance. Right? So again, this is for gamblers not the safety conscious. Let's talk about another fight that's interesting. You know, Steve Forbes has only been stopped once in his career. It was his last fight. It was his last fight. It was a stoppage in the last round by a fighter who surprised me named Karim Mayfield from here in the Bay Area. Right. My point to you, though, is simply this. You know, Steve Forbes has gone the distance with Oscar De La Hoya and Andre Berto. Now he's fighting Jesse Vargas, a Mayweather fighter who only has a 50% KO ratio and who has been in some tough fights of late. The Josito Lopez fight was a tough fight that could have gone either way. The over eight and a half rounds in a fight in which, understand, Forbes is a huge underdog, huge underdog, right? But the over eight and a half rounds at four to seven looks to me to be a tantalizing bet, right? If Andre Berto couldn't knock out Steve Forbes, why should I believe that Jesse Vargas is going to do it? I know he caught Walter Estrada. I know he had a string there where he was knocking a lot of guys out. But understand his KO ratio is only 50%. I like the over eight and a half rounds at four to seven in the Steve Forbes, Jesse Vargas fight. When you see a fight and, um, you know, one fighter is heavily favored. And keep in mind, you know, I think Vargas wins that fight because Vargas throws a lot higher volume. What I want you to do is to actually look at the prop bets because sometimes you'll see a mispricing and I believe this 4-7 to seven is a mispricing. You're not going to get rich on it, but if it hits, your rate of return will be greater than 50%. Now let's tackle the big fight. Floyd Mayweather against Miguel Cotto. Now let me say this. You know, Mayweather at minus 700, those odds are too long. Right. You're just not going to get rich on a minus 700. So what I want you to consider is the possibility 
that Miguel Cotto actually has a chance at a knockout early in this fight. He's a knockout puncher. Floyd Mayweather is a slow starter. And I also want you to consider the possibility that once Miguel Cotto fires his bullets in the first three rounds of this fight, he might have none left. And that Floyd Mayweather may at that point take over the match and have this fight looking like his masterpiece against Arturo Gatti. Right? Understand with Mayweather, things are a little bit different. When he has a decided advantage on a fighter, and when he has figured out how to blunt that fighter's attack and he decides to step forward, right? Understand that often his opponent gets completely overwhelmed, progressively so, as the fight goes along. Take a look at the Ricky Hatton fight. Hatton actually starts that fight decently. As that fight goes along, Mayweather starts to pull away. And then Ricky Hatton, quite frankly, looks downright defenseless at times. Take a look at the Arturo Gatti fight. Same type thing. Now, I know people are going to throw at me the Juan Manuel Marquez fight. Right? Didn't Mayweather knock him down? Didn't Marquez survive and go the distance? Understand, though, that that was a different Floyd Mayweather. That was a Mayweather who was shaking off ring rust, right? This Mayweather has actually been fighting. He didn't fight Victor Ortiz that long ago. Not only that, we know he's been in the gym. If we get to the fourth or fifth round and Cotto hasn't stopped Mayweather and Mayweather has figured out how to block Cotto's hand, left hand, I don't see what's going to stop Mayweather from stepping it up and trying to get a stoppage. And let me just point out, Mayweather by stoppage is 7-4. to four. Those are huge odds, right? Cotto by stoppage is 7-1. to one. You need to ask yourself, and I know Cotto 6 to 1 just to win the fight. But you need to ask yourself, is there a realistic possibility that Miguel Cotto is going to outbox Floyd Mayweather? I would say no. So, I don't want the 6 to 1. I want the knockout prop on Cotto. I want the 7 to 1 because the most realistic chance Cotto has to win this fight is by knockout and here in this video I'm swinging for the fences, right? So I like, oh, let me also say this too. With the Floyd Mayweather fight, and this is a bit of a stunner. You know, the under 10 and a half rounds. Again, the midway point of the 11th round. The under 10 and a half rounds right now on Skybet. And you can confirm these odds by going to oddschecker.com, right? A place that posts different sports books and posts the odds that they're offering at skybet.com. And you have to be in the UK to bet legally on Skybet. The under 10 and a half rounds is a six to four. In other words, you bet a hundred to win 150 in profit, right? You, you literally more than double your money. I'm expecting a stoppage in the Mayweather fight, right? I, I just look at these two fighters, either Miguel Cotto gets lucky or Floyd Mayweather deconstructs him and takes him out, right? I. I just don't see the third way where Cotto is able to hang around to go 12 rounds. He didn't make the 12-round mark against Manny Pacquiao. Quite frankly, even with all the multiple stoppages in his last fight against Antonio Margarito, I still believe it's an open question what would have happened in those last two rounds because keep in mind, Cotto faded against Margarito the first time the two of them fought. 
Now, I know people are saying, hey, Floyd Mayweather's a defensive fighter. You know what? Mayweather can move forward, especially when he's facing an opponent who he's figured out. Just look at the Gotti, um, you know, tape. Where did Gotti have to hide in that fight? Look at the Diego Corrales tape. Where did Diego Corrales have to hide in that fight? Right? If you don't believe Floyd Mayweather can get knockouts, ask yourself, what happened to Victor Ortiz? Wasn't that a stoppage? What happened to Ricky Hatton? Wasn't that a stoppage? I mean, when you add up Mayweather fights, right? Isn't it at least as likely that Floyd gets a knockout as not? Keep in mind, Shane Mosley went the distance with Floyd, but unlike Cotto, Mosley, in addition to having a left hook that, quite frankly, is as good as Miguel Cotto's left hook, Mosley also has a knockout right hand. I believe in that fight, Mayweather had to be more reluctant to step forward than he will be in this fight. And here, the odds that they're laying out, 7-1 to one, Cotto by knockout, Mayweather 7-4, to four, right? Should allow you to hedge the play where you literally profit if either happens, right? If you want to take the easy way out and give away the last round and a half, you can literally just take the under 10 and a half rounds at 6-4, to four, being offered on Skybet. The reason I prefer to take both fighters by knockout hedged against each other is simply because there I get all 12 rounds. So if I'm watching a fight and we get to the 12th round and one fighter is spent, right? Cotto, Manny Pacquiao, even though I thought that was a premature stoppage, right? If we get to the 12th round and the ref has seen enough, you still collect if you have that fighter to win the fight by KO as opposed to if you just took the under. I'm expecting knockouts this weekend, but not in the Forbes Vargas fight before the eight and a half round mark of that one. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Good luck gambling. Be careful though, because understand when you take these long shot KO props, understand that if the fight goes the distance, you lose it all, right? And so I like Cotto by knockout straddled against Floyd by KO. I like Shane Mosley by knockout straddled against Saul Alvarez by knockout. And I like the over eight and a half rounds in the Steve Forbes, Jesse Vargas fight. I also have some other plays on my DwyerVIP.com site. I hope you give that a look as well. Thanks for watching.